So Psalm 714, at least in this particular um, translation, Behold, the wicked man conceives evil and is pregnant with mischief and gives birth to lies. Hmm. So, yeah, I mean, I could see if if this is indeed the one that he was point, pointing to, uh, the idea that what we're fighting against is mm-hmm. is evil that has given birth in our country, and we need to uh, need to deal with it where it stands. So mm-hmm. we do that best through prayer. Our word for today on this Friday of the thirteenth week in ordinary time, this Friday, July the seventh. Our word for today is Saul. Saul is our word for today. S A W. Saul. Our word for today. Our reading from the book of Genesis, chapter twenty three. The span of Sarah's life was 127 years. She died in Karabathah, that is Hebron, in the land of Canaan, and Abraham performed the customary mourning rites for her. Then he left the sight of his dead one and addressed the Hittites. Although I am a resident alien among you, sell me from your holdings a piece of property for a burial ground that I may bury my dead wife. After the transaction, Abraham buried his wife Sarah in the cave of the field of Mechpelah, facing Mamre, that is, Hebron, in the land of Canaan. Abraham had now reached a ripe old age, and the Lord had blessed him in every way. Abraham said to the senior servant of his household, who had charge of all of his possessions, Put your hand under my thigh, and I will make you swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of earth, that you will not procure a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I live but that you will go to my own land and to my own kindred to get a wife for my son Isaac. The servant asked him, What if the woman is unwilling to follow me to this land? Should I then take your son back to the land from which you migrated? Never take my son back there for any reason, Abraham told him. The Lord, the God of heaven, who took me from my father's house in the land of my kin and who confirmed by oath the promise he then made to me, I will give this land to your descendants. He will send his messenger before you, and you will obtain a wife for my son there. (coughs) If the woman is unwilling to follow you, you will be released from this oath, but never take my son back there. A long time later, Isaac went to live in the region of the Negev. One day, toward evening, he went out in the field, and as he looked around, he noticed that camels were approaching. Rebekah, too, was looking about, and when she saw him, she alighted from her camel and asked the servant, Who is the man out there, walking through the fields toward us? That is my master, replied the servant. Then she covered herself with her veil. The servant recounted to Isaac all the things he had done. Then Isaac took Rebekah into his tent. He married her, and thus she became his wife. In his love for her, Isaac found solace after the death of his mother Sarah. Our responsorial Psalm 106, Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His mercy endures forever. Who can tell the mighty deeds of the Lord or proclaim all of His praises? Blessed are those who observe what is right, who do always what is just. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Visit me with your saving help, that I may see the prosperity of your chosen ones. Rejoice in the joy of your people, and glory with your inheritance. Alleluia, alleluia. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest, says the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew chapter 9. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at a custom post. He said to him, Follow me. And he got up and followed him. While he was at table in his house... Many tax collectors and sinners came and sat with Jesus and his disciples. The Pharisees saw this and said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? He heard this and said, Those who are well do not need a physician, but the sick do. Go and learn the meaning of the words, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Mm. Saw our word for today. We begin first with our Holy Father's thoughts regarding today's Gospel reading. These Pope Francis shared at his general audience on April the 13th, 2016. We have heard the Gospel account of the call of Matthew. Matthew was a publican, namely a tax collector, on behalf of the Roman Empire, and for this reason was considered a public sinner. 
But Jesus calls Matthew to follow him and to become his disciple. Matthew accepts and invites Jesus along with the disciples to have dinner at his house. Thus an argument arises between the Pharisees and the disciples of Jesus over the fact that the latter sit at the table with tax collectors and sinners. You cannot go to those people's homes, they said. Jesus does not stay away from them, but instead goes to their houses and sits beside them. This means that they too can become his disciples. It is likewise true that being Christian does not render us flawless. Like Matthew, the tax collector, each of us trusts in the grace of the Lord regardless of our sins. We are all sinners. We have all sinned. By calling Matthew, Jesus shows sinners that he does not look at their past, at their social status, at external conventions, but rather, he opens a new future to them. I once heard a beautiful saying, the Holy Father says, There is no saint without a past, nor a sinner without a future. This is what Jesus does. Again, there is no saint without a past, nor a sinner without a future. Saul, our word for today, taken from our gospel reading primarily, we see as Jesus passed by, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the custom post. He said to him, follow me. He saw him. Everyone else had judged him. It's not that the his fellow Israelites didn't see him with their physical eyes, but they didn't see him. They had judged him. They had placed him apart as unredeemable, as separate from them. And because they couldn't see him any longer, it was no problem to absolutely treat him differently, think upon him differently, hold him in low regard, and even wish the worst things upon him because they couldn't see him. And brothers and sisters, I would say at times we are tempted to do exactly the same thing. We see violence in our own land because people are not seen, because they won't make themselves look at an individual the slaughter of the innocent unborn because we won't acknowledge them even as an individual human being. The rejection of even looking at images going on for years and years and years now of babies in the womb, even though the technology has gotten so good that it looks like a personal photograph. And yet there is an offense taken when someone raises a picture of an unborn child and has someone look upon it. Why? Because it's easier if we don't see them to destroy them. And we can look at that and we, we stand against it as a people of faith. We stand against this kind of ignorance that leads to this kind of violence, that leads to this kind of destruction, that leads to this kind of murder, this kind of death. And yet our gospel reading today is not about a people who is without faith, it's actually about a people with faith. It's about the people of God who have rejected Matthew because of who he is. They refuse to see him because they have decided he is not worthy of being seen. And so we see in this uh, description today, Jesus passed by, he saw the man, he saw him, he looked at him, he spoke to him. He acknowledged him as a human being made in his own image and likeness. The one who had created him put his eyes upon him. He saw him and Matthew looked upon Jesus as well. And thus began the encounter. Jesus is not calling out to Matthew from a distance. He is not calling out to him in some cold way. No, he is looking upon him. He is encountering him. He is letting him know that he sees him. He sees his pain. He sees his rejection. He sees his conflict. And he's letting him know that he is loved because he sees him. And upon looking at him, after they have looked at each other, then Jesus says, follow me. And he got up, Matthew got up and followed him. This is the encounter that is necessary for us when we enter into relationship with the Lord and when we share the Lord with others. That first, 
They have to be seen. They have to know that we see them, that we do not reject them, that we do not hate them, that we don't want their destruction, but we want their salvation. And so we take this forward today as we ourselves enter into this ministry that the Lord has encouraged all of us, nay, 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 not not encouraged, (laughs) commanded that all of us do to go therefore and preach the gospel to all nations. As we conduct ourselves in this way, we follow the example of the one that we serve. First, we look. First, we see the individual. We let them look at us. We encounter them with love and care and concern. And then we are at a place where we can reveal to them the love of God, the love that God has for them in sending his only son, Jesus, into the world to die for them so that even the things that disgust us about them can be forgiven. Saul, our word for today. Mm -hmm.